do you know the, Mupp the have you heard of the Muppets? And they used to have like a little person singing. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Pachakucha. Do, 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 do. Help them out. Pachakucha is a Japanese word for chit chat and is the name of a presentation format created in Japan in 2003 by Astra Klein and Mark Dyson, two architects looking for a way people could share their work quickly and simply in public. Since then, the idea spread to over 700 cities around the world. At every Pecha Kucha night, creative thinkers come together and share their ideas with only 20 images shown for 20 seconds each. Pecha Kucha, a fast fun format. Find a location, join the conversation. Imagine it's your sophomore year of college. You're a new RA and you've been dating someone off and on for about a year. You go to their apartment one night with a mutual friend, and of course you feel comfortable there. So you all start pouring mixed drinks and watching movies and having a good time. And then you begin to feel a little fuzzy. And you wake up the next morning, half naked on the bed with no memory of last night. You feel confused and lost, a little nauseous even. And your friends don't talk to you on the way home, and when you text them, they make jokes and they don't give you any answers but eventually you find out that you had sex with one of them. This is how my story began. Flash forward to my senior year during RA training. We're listening to a sexual assault presentation presented by a sane nurse, and she's describing the characteristics and behaviors of survivors. And immediately I realized that I was the person that she was talking about. And everything made sense. I was a rape victim. Flash forward, I'm sorry, <laughs> my entire senior year was a blur of counseling sessions, panic attacks, sand tray therapy, and nightmares. My depression and anxiety got worse, and I was diagnosed with PTSD. I was so angry with myself because I didn't realize that I had been assaulted that night. I blamed myself, and I gave him the benefit of the doubt. During my first sand tray therapy session, a little red bird made of clay stood out to me and I gently connected with it and held on to it throughout the entire session. And the counselor realized how important it was to me, so she let me take it home. This bird now sits by my bed, and I see it every morning and every night. This bird has taught me so much, and I, I always hold on to it when I need strength. It's taught me that I'm no longer a victim, and there is another brighter side to this horrifying reality. This bird has taught me to be gentle with myself. It's taught me that I'll have good and bad days, that I can't do this alone. This bird has taught me that I can't live my life on the ground, scared of what will come next. I have wings, just like this bird, and I need to spread them and see where they'll take me. And by spreading my wings, I began sharing my story. I published it in a blog, posted it on Facebook, and I shared it at a retreat called Kairos. And at first, I was just so mad because I couldn't forgive him. But over time, I realized I just needed to forgive myself. When I share my story, I've had people thank me for being brave. And they've shared their heartbreaking stories with me. And it makes me so sick knowing that there are so many others hurting from this same pain. But this is why I share my story, to give a voice to those who didn't have one before. There's so much more to sexual assault than the legal side that we see on a college campus. So when working with people who have been sexually assaulted, remember how impactful the little things can be. Instead of drowning them in legal terms and reporting, be a human. I didn't report it when I first found out. It was more important to me to focus on myself and what I needed. But I, I began sharing my story with friends, looking for more support. And now, this is bigger than me. And I'm speaking out, hoping that others will feel empowered to do the same. We always focus on mandated reporting, Title IX and the Cleary Act. But what about the survivor's story? What about giving them the power to take back their life? No one knows how to handle this side of it. So just make sure that you give power to the survivor and their red bird. Don't listen to report it. Listen to support them. Focus on keeping them strong and empowered, 
on getting them what they need. Yes, report it if you need to, and if they choose to, but don't make that the primary reason for listening. Listen to give them a voice. This last year, I got documentation to get an emotional support animal, and I adopted Sally. She's the light of my life, and I don't know what I would do without her. I've spoiled her way too much, and I even went as far as making her an Instagram account. So does that mean I qualify as a crazy cat lady now? <laughs> this last November, a switch flipped in me, and I realized how important it was to report my rape. So I contacted someone from the school who would listen, and I set up a time to make a formal report and relive every excruciating moment that I could remember from that night four years ago. And they went through an investigation, and they held a hearing, but with less than favorable results. I couldn't breathe, as the committee announced. We're dropping the charges. Have a good night. I appealed the decision, but it was upheld. This was the first time that I wasn't unconditionally supported. And I feel like I was called a liar because my story didn't match up with the boys. They couldn't prove that there wasn't consent, which makes me feel like I wasn't incapacitated enough. My alma mater, the place that I thought was the most amazing place in the world, had betrayed me. I felt lost and confused. I still do. And I feel angry. I feel so fucking angry. I fight self-harm and suicidal thoughts every day. But I've been able to turn my pain into passion. My passion is to end this epidemic, and I work hard to spread awareness, to advocate, and to educate college students. I don't need the school to tell me what he did was wrong. It would have made my life easier, but I know the truth. I know that what happened that night was not consensual, and I'm not to blame. And that night wasn't in my control. But what is in my control is my recovery. And all of you here tonight know the truth as well. This little red bird has changed the course of my life, and I hope it's changed yours. I'm no longer a victim. I'm a survivor. And this little red bird has taught me that everyone's voice deserves to be heard. So I ask you to listen. Listen to the stories and help them speak louder. Mm -hmm.